Hello and welcome to a humid Kisinau, Moldova. Now I've been traveling for the last couple of months, eating some of the best food in the world, from amazing Slovakia in Greece to a big, bad, beautiful bowl of borscht in Transnistria. But sometimes when you're traveling, you just crave the basics. And I've been craving a quarter pounder for the last couple of days. Now let me tell you something about Moldovan McDonald's, my friends. It is absolute dog garbage trash. So I did a little bit of research and I just found out that five, count them five, McDonald's just reopened in Odessa, Ukraine. So today I'm taking a bus there. I'm actually walking to the bus station right now and we're gonna give it a go and see if the recently reopened and renovated Ukrainian McDonald's hold up to my high standards. Let's go. Okay, so I got over the Moldova-Ukraine border. I just got questioned for like an hour, an hour and a half. Because I had this in my bag from a, as a souvenir from Transnistria. And um, yeah, my bus left without me and everything. But the next bus let me off free, so it's all good. But it's all a part of travel, especially when you're going into countries that are at war and stuff. So all's good. That shit kind of sucked. Uh, they searched my phone, my bag, everything. And I've finally arrived. <sighs> Let's go get some fucking McDonald's. Okay, so I've just arrived. It's about 8 p.m. I'm in the city center and it seems like most things uh, locking up and shutting doors right now, so maybe we won't get the McDonald's today, but we're gonna get it. You slimy son of a gun, there's our target right there. Mickey D's, Macca's, McDonald's. Well, it is now the next day, and I have come here to what they call the Grand Empire Business Park, in English. And uh, they supposedly have a statue of Lenin here that they converted into a statue of Darth Vader. Only one problem is that, um, yeah, it says online that it is open 24 seven, but it appears that it is completely locked up today at least. Uh, I got no idea why. But I'm going to try and find an entrance somewhere. Probably won't be able to, but you know, you know it's here. You know that there's a statue of Darth Vader here now. So uh, here's a picture of it on the screen. But I'm going to still try to find an entrance. Probably won't be able to, but let's uh, see what we can do. Okay, well, I found this other entrance and I just tried to walk through and the guy told me, no, you have to go to the other entrance, but it is locked. And I told him that over uh, Google Translate and he was just like, oh, okay, but you still have to go to that gate to get in. So like, I don't know. So uh, I just spent money on an Uber to get here for nothing, but uh, no problem, no problem. Odessa is a beautiful city. We'll find other sites to see. It's all good. <laughs> and the statue is literally right around that corner. I can basically smell it. But I can't even get a peep at it. Because this whole thing is locked. Locked, talked. Okay, so I've just gone and bought myself a nice iced tea. Ordered another Uber. And we're going to take a nice Soviet-era uh, cable car trip. From... Uh, more of the center to Odessa, and then it goes down to the beach. So let's have a nice beach day.
here I am in the Soviet era cable car. It feels very strange because it's a very small cabin. I'm up pretty high. There's no uh, protection here really. I uh, just had to uh, jump in while it was moving and lock this myself. Um, <clears throat> but I feel like now is a good time to talk about the, uh, you know, elephant in the room. Of course, I am in a country at war, but let me tell you, specifically this city, it's very strange how normal everything feels. Everything is so beautiful, everyone is going up, uh, along with their day as normal, and, you know, of course, uh, it's, um, there's an eeriness in the air because of the fact that, you know, that the country is at war, but it feels fine. Uh, of course, there are soldiers on every street corner, really. Uh, there are billboards everywhere for uh, uh, conscription in the army. But that's really the only um, uh, reminder of, of the war that I see. Everyone seems to be going along their day, like, quite fine. And from talking to other travellers across my journey for the last couple of months that have been here, specifically in Odessa, they say that I will hear uh, air raid sirens eventually, and I will have to uh, find cover in a um, bomb shelter. Uh, but that hasn't happened yet, and everything feels so normal. It is such a beautiful city. Let me show you this view that I'm coming up on. And there we go, that was the Soviet era cable car in Odessa, Ukraine. Absolutely beautiful. And now we're at uh, one of the beautiful beaches of Odessa. I'm in jeans, but I'm still gonna go get myself a little tan. This is one of the most beautiful, most chill beaches I've been to in all of Europe. This is amazing. So I'm here at the beach now. I found some locals. We're gonna go for a swim in a minute. It's gonna be fun. The water is absolutely beautiful here. It's not that salty. Beautiful. Lava Ukraine. Yeah, of course. beer. Andrei Matsova. This is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. So, my friend here is a part of the army, and he's telling me right now he's wounded because of his, his jaw here. See? You see? Sure. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's a good uh, injury to not have to fight in the war, but, you know, that sucks. That absolutely sucks. But most uh, grown men here seem to be a part of the army, and I guess everybody who didn't want to is uh, flee. And then there are younger guys who aren't a part of the army, and there's some guys who aren't, but... But, uh, yeah, that's just how it seems to be here in Ukraine at the moment. My friend here just gave me a flower. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so you see these uh, pipes here? All these yellow pipes that you see all over uh, Ukraine, and I've seen them a lot in Moldova, specifically in Transnistria. They're the uh, gas pipelines 
This is how they get their energy. This is how they cook their food. It's uh, quite strange that they're above ground, but I guess it's easier to do it that way. But what I'm assuming is that they were built in the uh, Soviet era. And I assume that they built them like this because it's a lot cheaper to build them over ground. But it's a uh, very um, telling of the times in which they were built. Mm. It's not the McDonald's that I've been craving. We'll get there soon. But this is better than the Borscht and Transnistria, I'll tell you that much. This is great. This is beautiful. Okay, I just tried to take a video of one of the uh, bomb bunkers from the other side of the road and a couple of uh, members of the military came up to me and told me to delete the video. So I'm sorry, but uh, you won't be seeing any uh, bomb bunkers in this video, I guess. But, uh, you know, I guess that's for the best. It's probably like to do with not giving the enemy intel into where different bunkers are and stuff, you know. I guess that's what it is. Even though that they have like, like apps that show you where different bomb bunkers are, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm currently sat here outside of the Odessa Trade Union building. This place and the surrounding area has quite a sad, storied history. In early 2014, there were various clashes between different protest groups here in the city of Odessa. During the uh, pro-Russian unrest following the Ukrainian revolution. Specifically, these clashes were between the pro-Russian and pro-Ukrainian protesters. And this all culminated in a lot of uh, street clashes. And on May 2nd, violence erupted at a Unite Ukraine rally in which uh, Russian separatists attacked. Gunfire and petrol bombs were exchanged between the two groups, which resulted in the death of two pro-Ukrainian and four pro-Russian activists. This resulted in the pro-Ukrainian side of the conflict dismantling the pro-Russian camp in this exact area that I'm sitting in right now. This caused the pro-Russian separatists to seek refuge in this very trade union building that I'm sitting in front of. The pro-Ukrainians attempted to storm this building that the pro-Russian separatists had barricaded themselves in, which resulted in more exchange of petrol bombs. These petrol bombs, of course, inevitably caused this building here to catch fire. It is said that 42 of the pro-Russian separatists burned to death in this building and 200 were injured, which is a staggering number, seeing as there was only about 300 of them to begin with. And in total, the clashes claimed the lives of 48 people, 46 of them being pro-Russian. It is the bloodiest civil conflict in the region since the Bolshevik uprising in 1918 and although several people have now been charged no trial 
has yet to come to fruition. And in uh, 2015, the International Advisory Panel of the Council of Europe uh, came to the conclusion that there was heavy police compliance in this attack and that the authorities failed to properly investigate this uh, situation. And I believe that this place is now being used as a uh, shelter, a bomb shelter. This here in a uh, Ukrainian says shelter. And it does seem that there is still a lot of damage to the building, even though after the attacks, it was put back into use quite swiftly actually. And I don't really have much more to say about this place. It's just that, you know, I came here to Odessa. One, because it's such a beautiful city from what I've seen. Amazing beaches. But I'd be a fool to not talk about the very storied history of this city in particular. You know, it's so sad. Coming from where I come from such an affluent country such as Australia and I've lived in America in Los Angeles one of the richest cities in the world two places that have no conflict on their own land and to come to a place like this and learn about uh, you know this is a conflict that was technically before the war even though there was conflict going on in Ukraine at the time but it was technically before the war and even then there was Dozens of people dying in such a beautiful city like this. It's just hard to, you know, hard to grasp as, you know, a Westerner such as myself. Yeah, it's sad. It's very sad. And these here are anti-tank bollards. I'm secretly recording because I got told off for recording these earlier. But I really wanted to show you, so, you know, that's what these are. inverted buns and all. Finally, here I am with my Ukrainian McDonald's. I've been so enamored with this beautiful city that I damn near forgot about my initial mission. But we're here. I got my fries, my uh, curry sauce dip that I've never tried before, so I had to grab it. So they have chicken wings on the menu, and of course, the creme, de la creme. We've got the quarter pounder, or as they call it, the pawn. Or they actually call it a McRoyal. But it says pawn on it. it can't, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. But I'm immature, so that's what I'm going to call it. The difference to any McDonald's I've seen before is they have it in a, in a paper wrap inside the box. Good for handling. Great for handling. Mm hmm. Much much better than Moldovan McDonald's. I'll tell you that much. But it is quite um, vastly different from McDonald's in Australia or America. The bread, you can tell it's different. It's not bad or anything, but it's definitely different. And the beef patty, not the highest quality I've ever had. It's McDonald's, so I let it pass. But the... Um, the pickles and the onions, very, very standard McDonald's, like you find in any McDonald's. The sauces, the cheese, brings it all together and really makes it, uh, makes it what you would think of from a McDonald's. And now into fries. Extremely standard McDonald's fries. They taste the same everywhere. McDonald's fries have to be one of the biggest comfort, comfort foods around the world. Like, this is so... This is so good. I'm gonna try it with some of this uh, curry sauce. The curry sauce is just like a um, sweet, not spicy at all type of curry. 
It tastes like kind of like jarred supermarket curry under the chicken wings. To be honest, if I'm going to McDonald's, I'd rather some McNuggets, but I had to try these out. Not bad, not bad, not great. Alright, so it's late at night. Decided to go back to McDonald's because I had a couple little drinky poos. And we got myself a chicken wrap. This time it's not the pawn, it's the pawn. A little more classy. So let's uh, give it a little squiz, if you will. Standard McDonald's wrap affair from what I see. I think that was the sound of a fighter jet. It's kind of... Bro, I'm just about to take a bite of this chicken wrap and I just heard some type of fucking fighter jet and then an explosion. What the fuck was that? Is that what I think it was? Like, really? It's kind of fucking terrifying. But anyway, um, standard McDonald's chicken wrap affair. Looks a little skinnier than the ones I've had in the past. That's an air raid siren. That's the first air raid siren I've experienced while I've been here. But anyway, let's dig into this uh, McDonald's chicken wrap. It's pretty good. But my stomach kind of turned because of that um, explosion. But anyway, let's have another bite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, English. Everyone around me seems to be walking at a normal pace. The cars don't seem to be rushing. Seems pretty chill. Welcome to Ukraine, I guess. But um, so yeah, this chicken wrap is pretty good. Mayo, lettuce, tomato, chicken. All wrapped up in a tortilla. Or oh, it's like a flour wrap. Pretty tortilla-like. English. But that's crazy. That is pretty intense. That is pretty insane that um, I sat down to eat. I've been here for three days, haven't heard one air raid siren even. And I hear a fighter jet, an explosion, and then air raid sirens. They seem to be done. And everyone seems to be quite chill. But that was eerie earlier in the video I talked about how everyone seems to be going about their day as normal the Ukrainian people seem so strong I guess it's just a part of war but they seem very unfazed when stuff like this happens people go on up on their like normal day hearing air raid sirens every day or almost every day it's quite strange last night I went out to a bar around the corner from where I'm staying and I was talking to some people and of course the uh, the war was brought up in conversation. I didn't bring it up but you know they're wondering why I'm here during wartime and it got pretty emotional. Nobody cried or anything but we talked about the, um, the impact behind everything they've been through. And it seems like it's putting a lot of stress on the people of uh, Ukraine, but at the end of the day, these are very strong people. I know Australians and Americans, two countries where I've lived, 
could never be this strong during wartime, if, especially if it's on their own soil. It's just, it's just something different. And I guess, you know, earlier in the video, I showed you guys the trade union building that had been burnt down. And that's not the only conflict that they've had before the war officially started. So I guess they've been trained to kind of accept this kind of um, behavior. Um, this kind of conditioning before um, they even had to deal with an official war. And you know, it is very, very saddening. And you know, I understand that it's quite comedic that um, this happened during myself doing a review of a McDonald's chicken wrap of all things. But it's pretty fucking serious. And I really, really respect the people of Ukraine. I really respect them to the fullest extent. They're handling this like some absolute champions. Slava Ukraine. Okay, so as you can probably hear, the air raid sirens are going off again. So I'm gonna get the fuck out of here, buddy. It's time to fucking get the fuck out of here. I think I'm gonna actually end the video right here. You know, I came to this city for a bag of McDonald's and in the end, I found an absolutely beautiful, marvelous city with great people and great sights to see. And I'd suggest that all of you come here and visit once the, uh, I guess once the unrest is complete, or even if you're up for travel during these times or just as dumb as me, you can come now. It's still an amazing city. But yeah, I'm gonna end the video right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Oh, and of course, I almost forgot, but uh, just love you, Ukraine. Thank you.